Indeed. Well, I'm delighted to say we're joined by one of the high priests of Brexit, one of the founding fathers, Sir John Redwood, Conservative MP for Wokingham. Welcome to Talk Radio, sir. Hello. And what is the significance not only of Mr Barnier's comments on fishing, um, but his tone as well? It seems that either he's playing a political game or he is suggesting that these talks are about to shut down. He did sound very rattled, didn't he? Mm. Um, I hope the EU calmed down. We want to be friends with the neighbours. We're still very happy to buy quite a lot of the products they've always been selling us. We'd be happy to do that without putting extra tariffs on, on them to make it more difficult for them. Indeed. But if they want to carry on like that, they need to understand we will be running our own fishing grounds and we will be making our own laws and we will be controlling our own borders. That's what Brexit was all about. Indeed. Um, is, a, is any kind of deal uh, before the end of the year desirable in your view, Sir John? Well, of course, we'd all rather have a free trade deal than not have a free trade deal. And we, we trade very successfully with big countries like America and China without the benefit of a free trade deal. You can trade with um, other great nations and groupings under world trade rules without a special free trade agreement. But if you can get a special free trade agreement, you can get the remaining tariffs off and things are a bit cheaper. So that's helpful. So that's why Britain has very generously offered uh, to accept exactly the sort of terms that the EU has negotiated with Canada and Japan and so forth. Uh, I'm a bit surprised they don't just say yes, but uh, they're obviously finding it difficult to adjust to the idea that they can't boss us around anymore. Well, I think we've seen since the referendum result uh, in 2016 to leave, we've had more politics than economics, certainly from Brussels. And you could see in the mood music that the EU was willing to suffer economically in order to protect the project. Do you think that the goalposts have shifted given that COVID-19 has sent the EU into an economic tailspin? Well, no, I don't interpret it quite as you did. And I think the EU reckoned that the parliament was full of Remain voting MPs and there was a, a very weak government that often didn't have a majority for what it was meant to be doing. And so they rightly thought, if we just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, we'll delay this matter and we'll get the Remain MPs to make more concessions. And that, that strategy worked pretty well uh, all the time we had a broken parliament. But as soon as we had a, a big Brexit win in the election, the EU should have understood that they got to change their approach very dramatically because this, this leader has a mandate for getting Brexit through with or without the free trade agreement. Uh, and it's a very generous offer to the EU. So they should think, well, that's not a bad deal after all from our point of view. Of course, both sides of the continent businesses uh, face an existentialist threat. Uh, we're going to lose many companies and, of course, the potential tsunami of job losses. Again, on both sides of the Atlantic, we're all suffering uh, to a degree equally on this one. Do you think that the economic fallout from COVID-19 and the pandemic it changes the tone of negotiations. I mean, surely there's a bit more desperation to get some kind of deal because businesses need it. Well, I would hope that it would encourage um, both sides to value the free trade agreement which the UK has proposed. I think the UK has, has been very calm, very friendly, very, very sensible. But clearly, our new negotiator had to be very clear and firm because the EU had got used to the UK buckling at every point where the EU objected. And they are finding it difficult to adjust. But I, I would urge them as, as friends and allies and trading partners that, yes, we, we are all suffering economic damage from the policies governments felt they had to follow to try and tame the virus. Uh, and so that's even more reason to want to add the additional advantage of tariff free to the relatively free trading system we have anyway uh, under our joint mutual um, memberships of the World Trade Organization. Um, if some kind of trade arrangement cannot be agreed by the end of the year, do you fear that jobs in this country could be lost as a result given the added friction, the issue about getting goods in and out of the country and a potential correction in UK GDP? Uh, no, I, I don't think that, because I think we've had a colossal loss of GDP on both sides of the channel, um, owing to the 
dreadful pandemic and the policies that have been adopted, there's going to be a recovery uh, from here uh, because the extreme controls are being gradually relaxed and there's been plenty of money put out in the form of loans to companies uh, and payments to individuals to, to keep their salaries and wages coming in. Um, so I think we're now into that phase where you're going to see some recovery. Um, I think the um, trading system works fine with or without a free trade agreement, as I, as I said earlier in this interview. Um, we've actually grown our trade very successfully with, with big countries outside the EU where we didn't have the benefit of a free trade agreement. So we know our borders can handle trade without a free trade agreement. They're all set up for levying EU tariffs on products from America and China already. Uh, so we know how to do it. and There's no reason to have great lorry queues um, just because uh, you have a little bit more electronic paperwork. It can all be filed in advance by authorized economic uh, operators. Uh, and a lot of it can be cleared electronically. Are we also a little hung up on this deadline of the 31st of December, given the fact that uh, should we uh, be unable to organise a trade arrangement between the UK and the EU, that there would, pre there would continue to be the political will to get one sorted into 2021? I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't ever have a trade arrangement, does it? Well, we can have a, a trade arrangement as soon as the EU wants one. I mean, we're just waiting for the EU to want one, and they're making it very clear at the moment they don't want one. Uh, so clearly the negotiations aren't going anywhere. When they come round to the view you've just expressed, that maybe it would be in their interests not to face any tariff barriers into the UK because they sell us a lot more than we sell them, uh, then they'll find the UK has already got a, a draft trade agreement ready for them which they ought to like because it's based on the trade agreements they've already offered third countries outside the EU in the past. So, John, ultimately, are you comfortable with the government's negotiating position and will the EU blink? Do you think we can get this deal done? I think we can and I think they might. Um, but, yes, I'm absolutely sure that the only course of action that can secure a deal that would be worth having is the one the government's following. I'm a great admirer of what Mr Frost and the Prime Minister have done so far. They've been clear, they've been friendly, they've been straightforward. Um, what they're saying makes a lot of sense from the EU point of view, but the EU doesn't see it like that at the moment. We've just got to stay there being positive, being friendly, saying, look, we're very happy to give you tariff-free access. Um, just sign up to something like your Canada deal. And that's the only possible position. Anything else means going back to accepting their laws and making payments to them and uh, giving them large amounts of fish, which we probably need for our own domestic purposes and so forth, which is not what we voted for. Sir John Redwood, thank you so much for your time, Conservative MP for Wokingham and one of the founding fathers of Brexit. Do you agree with Sir John, who sees no problem if we crash out of the EU, the transition period comes to an end at the end of the year. Of course, we're out. But the uh, the crumple zone, the buffer of this year transition comes to an end December the 31st of this year. How do you feel about no deal? Is that an optimal position? 03444991000.